Good morning, wrestling fans, and welcome to PWR Today, Thursday morning, October 7th, 2021. The man they call me dead, and I don't have anything clever to say about him, Matthew Thomas. Good morning, Matthew. Good morning. Sometimes just straight into the point is the best procedure, and you did a great job in that procedure, Meathead. Yeah, yesterday, I'm telling you, the, but his mama calls him, that literally happened that second. Hey, sometimes you just got to roll with it. You know, got to roll with it, baby. I think that's Steve Winwood if I'm not mistaken. All right. Let us talk about a sponsor real quick, and then we'll get right into the news. Go ahead, Matthew. Speaking of rolling with it, now you have the option to roll up your collar and elbow sleeves. Some great new fall apparel. I was just perusing the website, and, you know, they've got your standard, uh, you know, T-shirts. They've got some long sleeve shirts. I need to go back and click on it in detail. I may have glimpsed a three-quarter length t-shirt i'm a big fan of the three-quarter length t-shirt because they're just days when i wake up and i say you know what i don't have to go by society standards of wearing long sleeves or short sleeves sometimes i want not necessarily something are you in the talking middle. about three-quarter lengths on the waist or on the sleeve <laughs> so sometimes i want i want something not necessarily in the middle but three-quarters of the way down the middle and that's when i reach for my three-quarter length sleeves but if you want to browse the fine selection at collar and elbow head on over to collar and elbow brand.com enter promo code linda k l-i-n-d-a-k-a-y save 10 percent. and hey maybe with that money that you save you can use that to buy me some stuff it's funny that you said that because when you said three quarter three quarters shirts i'm like wow dude i don't think matthew understands because of his age and maybe my age that back in the day when i was a teenager those were the style those shirts yeah. that didn't go down to your waist so you could show off your abs and oh. mesh shirts, you know, that, that oh, was, I was the beach wear. Yeah, I was talking about the uh, the baseball shirts. Yeah, the base. Yeah, the baseball sleeves. They're but yeah, baseball what you're talking about too. The piping on the um, on the shoulders, the different. You colors. know what? I saw a picture not too long ago of me when I was like probably seven or eight, and I was you know the fashion icon then as well too. But I'm wearing one of them, it's mesh and kind of see through, and you know I knew what I was, uh, I knew what kind of style I was going for at such a young age. I'm gonna have to find that and send that to you, me, Dad. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we'll get there. Well, you know, I can't wait. It's a bated breath for pictures of Matthew when he was nine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit of news. It's leftover news from NXT. First off, we did not mention that that man in the crowd on NXT was Parker Boudreaux, now known by Harland. Uh, that is the big Brock Lesnar-looking dude that we have been talking about for months, uh, debuting on NXT. Plus, there is some way news. Indy was out with her best friend, and not the way. Uh, Austin Theory debuted on Raw. And Johnny Gargano has updated his Twitter profile to not include anything related to WWE slash NXT. Mm. Is the way done? Looks like it. Thank Looks you for the like defense. It. I was going to say thank no, you no, for the no. Defense. I mean, here's the here's the thing. You've got, I mean, you've got the index. I mean, they can go off. She can do her thing with uh, Dexter. I think that's a pretty self contained angle. And you you got to look at. Um, I mean, uh, Candice LeRae, she's pregnant, so you got to think she's taking some time off for that. So, yeah, I think it most likely is done. Okay. Let's move on to bigger news. Uh, this is kind of a combination as well. Uh, there is a press release out there from uh, CBS Viacom that has said that uh, they have reached a multi-year deal with WOW, the women of wrestling, to produce content with them. Uh, don't... Don't know. It hasn't been confirmed yet if it's CBS, a weekly program, or if it's going to be Paramount Plus. But on the other related news, at the press conference, uh, signed on as executive producer for the relaunch of Wow Women of Wrestling is AJ Mendez, otherwise known as AJ Lee. April, CM Punk's wife, the one that he refers to, is going to be heading up Women of Wrestling. That's exciting for them, and good job on getting a high-profile name that people have been seeing, you know, seen clamoring for uh, in the industry. You know, and I'm just kind of rolling off the cuff here, but I know that talking about Paige making a return to in-ring action, I mean, maybe that's a spot for Paige to land right there if you want to attach some other big names to that promotion as well, too. And in I'm in-ring, because I'm going to give you a quote from the press conference. Quote, mm -hmm. but my goal after wrestling was to create those characters for the next generation so every little girl could see themselves on TV and know that nothing was impossible. Unquote. We're not crying. You are from the words that A.J. Mendes spoke at the press conference. Yeah. 
Well, I look forward to seeing what materializes from it, and I like your suggestion of perhaps a Paramount Plus show, and I may very well be wrong, but I don't believe there is a current wrestling product that is on a premium subscription network like that. So they could be the forebearers and to what I think you will eventually see. Well, what about the see? W Wrestling League? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. You know, they uh, they finally got some broadcast rights out of the Duffy Dome. So you do have a point there. Fair enough. Uh, also word uh, and rumored to be involved in uh, WOW Women of Wrestling, former Impact Heavyweight Champion Tessa Blanchard. Wow. Interesting. Uh, have not seen or heard a lot from her uh, recently. So we'll have to um, see where that goes. But when I heard you say... Uh, I thought you said Wild, uh, which I was thinking you were going to segue into some talk about Wild Bill. Maybe Wild Bill's going to be involved. No, wow. no, no. Wild Bill's got that triple thread going on in the Duffy, uh, the that's DWL. True. That's true. That's true. All right. Let's, uh, let's continue on and let's talk AEW. They had their two-year anniversary show last night, and it started off and kicked off. Not even when entrances. I'm kind of disappointed because I like the Adam Cole entrance because I want to hear, you know, it's all about the boom. Yeah. Adam yeah. Cole, baby! <clears throat> nope, they started off with all eight competitors in the ring. A eight-man tag match. Christian Cage, Brian Danielson, Jurassic Express, taking on the Super Elite. Adam Cole, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, and the Stooges on the outside. Brandon Cutler and Michael Nakazawa. A great match, great spots all the way through, except, and we can't not bring this up. I'm not trying to say that, ha, 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 you made a mistake. But we cannot bring this up because the match is great up until this point. Uh, they tried to pick up Luchasaurus, yeah. and Kenny Omega just fell. I mean, nothing. And you can see the six of them or whatever look at each other, and just basically they whispered or did something and said, go to the next spot, because yeah. that spot was shot. Other yeah. than that, I like the match. Here's the thing. I want to go back to actually before that, something that I thought stood out just as much, if not more than that, was I believe it was at the Indie Taker that they did to the outside, the spot where – you know, you're basically in a, a tombstone pile driver with one of the bucks jumping off of whatever. In this case, he was jumping off the ropes. He's quite essentially jumping to the outside and just, I mean, putting his fingers on the opponent and the other buck is going down with him. I just that did not look great last night. And AEW does a lot of stuff very well. I personally feel that multi-man tag matches are not one of them. We have gotten no, away it's not from one of it. Their strong suits at all. Yeah, we've gotten away from it. The moments where you had actual tag team wrestling going on, where you had Cole and uh, Jungle Boy starting off and tagging in and out with Christian, I liked. But when you've got eight guys fighting at the same time, the referee not even pretending to try to and then keep guys, any six or order. Seven guys waiting for the spot. And waiting for the next spot. And then you've got the finish, which I give JR, JR and Tony Schiavone, I will the I give them credit. When you see these breakdowns of wrestling psychology that AEW has happened, has sometimes consistently happened, you know, JR making the comment, he's like, all right, that was the finish of the tag match. He got hit in the head by four guys that were in the ring at the same time. So credit to JR for calling that. Um, the match worked in the effect that the crowd enjoyed it and it got off to a positive start. But from, yeah. you know, my what I like to see in wrestling, it was not necessarily my cup of tea. Also, something else I want to throw out there. I think Daniel Bryan, yeah, I think I think they do a good job of Punk coming out and making Punk feel special, having his own segment. I don't want to see Daniel Bryan lost in an eight-man tag this early into his AEW run. Okay. He's got to be there, though. I mean, or this Brian, was a main Brian, event. The open Brian, Dan, Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan doesn't exist. I'm sorry. <laughs> he does. He just hasn't worked in WWE since WrestleMania. Uh, CM Punk came out, and uh, he asked a great question. Are you guys sick of me yet? Is, it, is the love fest still going on? I mean, are we good? I'm going to buy everybody a cheesecake. Oh, I mean, a cheesesteak. Maybe Freudian slip. Maybe it was yeah. intentional. But uh, he calls out Daniel Garcia, and they're going to have a match this Friday on Rampage. Yeah, and then he um, he also gave a child his shoes, which was cool, but kind of odd. Uh, there's something bigger there. Maybe it's a is make it? a wish type deal. Okay. Better. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, I, I didn't know, you know, he talked to him beforehand and then, you know, he gave it to him afterwards. I just, 
I, he, he, it just kind of left me, you know, I, I don't know if this is a new thing that, that he starred in or, or what, but no. anyway there. That's just, that's my point, because remember, that spot is the heavy camera spot. So yeah. when they have wrestlers come in and hang out, that's where they sit. That's where celebrity, I mean, that's the spot. Here's the thing. I would much appreciate, uh, you know, I I would appreciate a wrestler giving an audience member an article of clothing as opposed to the wrestler telling the audience member to remove that article and burning it in a barrel outside of their home. As we were about to talk about what the hell is going on with Arn and Cody uh, just burning clothes outside. I don't know. I don't know, but it's still in the uh, I'm still greatly intrigued and amused by it. You know, when Um, Arn. When Arn threatens to kill you or shows up at your home and lights a fire and burns your garments, at least it's more innocent and lovable than when Goldberg threatens to kill you. Right. I mean, again, new tag team champions, Arn Anderson and Bill Goldberg. <laughs> Murderers <laughs> row. All right, let's talk about the AEW TNT Championship. Sammy Guevara and Bobby Fish. They really did a great job of building Bobby Fish for this. Yeah. The winner of the match still, Sammy Guevara. Yeah, Bobby Fish looked great. I mean, you associated him with uh, Undisputed Era in NXT. I feel like he kind of got – the Bobby Fish character kind of got put on the back burner because you had such strong presence in Adam Cole and Roderick Strong. Um, good to see him you know, with his uh, – with the spotlight last night, and I mean, they're going deep with the Bobby Fish merch and the Bobby Fish logo and stuff, so you got to think he's on board with AEW for a little while. Possibly, but after the match, right after the match, here comes uh, members of uh, America Top Team. Um, I have to ask, should a, a, a entrance song continue to play throughout a physical altercation? <laughs> I understand that the crowd is required to yeah. get one sing-along segment, right? Yeah. But now I understand why it happened at yeah, the end. Yeah. I mean, you know, even though we tape Rampages after, give the crowd a sing-along on Rampage. Uh, it shouldn't still be yeah. going while they're fighting. Yeah. Um, you know, although I liked that it was worth it to me to get to Dan it was Lambert saying, go ahead, and finish Dan up. Dan Lambert couldn't do anything to shut him up. No, and they let him have it, too. And normally you don't see Dan Lambert miss a beat on his promo, but he he really sounded like he was reading off of a teleprompter last night. I think that Philadelphia crowd, I mean, they let him have it. And, you know, he got through it, but it sounded very, very scripted when Dan Lambert really doesn't sound that way. Were you aware that the Acclaimed were the number one ranked tag team? No. That yow, was unused yow, to me. Yo, I got a bunch of winches on Dark. I got a bunch of wins on Dark, not winches. <laughs> I got a bunch of wins on Dark, and I'm back, sucker. Um, I, I w- if he would just once for me, please, while he's doing his rap drop, the phrase, Mom Spaghetti. I, I mean, yeah. I, I'll lose it. Yeah. You know, that's a real restaurant, by the way. Eminem opened it up, and he actually served spaghetti for the first hour. There's not a lot of uh, a good spaghetti places, man, that specialize in spaghetti. You know, he what, said, what I think – Literally, I gotta, we got to talk about spaghetti. Sorry, we're going to sidetrack here. <laughs> Welcome to Spaghetti Talk. It, he said that the flavor that he went for was specifically a flavor that tasted like your mom had to reheat it because she made it a week ago and she just got home late from work. I think I prefer reheated spaghetti over, over real spaghetti. You know, something there's not enough restaurants of or any restaurants of or not even on the restaurant menu outside of the holidays. And it's a shame is stuffing. If you want a gold mine, man. What you do is you open up a restaurant that serves nothing but stuffing year round, and there's your fortune. So you're not into cereal shack or PB's uh, peanut butter sandwiches. You don't. Uh, you want a stuffing restaurant. Yeah, yeah, and you can. I mean, you can sp- spice it up, you know. But uh, like stuffing is the main entree. You have to bring your own gravy boat. No, no, they can make gravy too. I mean, various kinds of gravy and whatnot. You know, that's what you can do. But yeah, build a restaurant around stuffing and you will get my business. I don't care where you're located at in the continental United States. I will make a journey to your stuffing restaurant. (laughs) Get stuffed. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Fill up on stuffing. All right. The big announcement from Tony Khan. Shivani's in the ring with referee Aubrey Edwards. It's very clear that she's holding a championship belt. They introduced the TBS championship, which will be a secondary title for the women's division. Shivani says the inaugural TBS champion will be cited in a tournament. Folks, when 
Dynamite officially moves in January from TNT to TBS. I don't know if they're going to keep the TNT belt. I assume they will or call yeah. it something else. I thought they would change the TNT to TBS. But this TBS belt is a secondary belt in the women's division. I have a very legitimate concern about this and a um, suggestion. Build your women's division stronger on the main belt. Yeah. And then enter Dales, uh, introduce yeah. a second belt. That's the concern is I don't know the division strong enough. And we made we made strides towards that last night. We're making you know, they're going they're going in the right direction, but I don't know that it's not that it's that it's too early uh, to do that. And the other thing, and I didn't realize this was an issue with me, the TNT title has not bothered me. You know, even though it's associated with a network, it's a name of a network, it has not felt like advertising to me. And I realize probably why that is. The TNT title has the TNT logo, but the TNT logo is a very plain, I guess it's block font. I mean, it's a very basic font that TNT has as their logo. So when I see that on a belt, it doesn't remind me that they're advertising something. When I saw right. the TBS belt last night, because the TBS does have that very signature stylistic logo. With and it's the, very soft. It's wrong. Yes, with. it's very soft. And it's the lowercase letters. I didn't like that. And it it felt overly commercial to me. And then I'm thinking, all right, well, TNT, and the they're color. just – Yeah. Uh, so that struck me odder than I would have expected that it would have struck me on I paper. I honestly we believe, Matthew, it should have been a tag team belt. Yeah, yeah. Because they have enough women there that we could have got a tag team division or a six-man tag belt for the men. Yeah. But I think and, another women's belt isn't wrong. Yeah. I just think that you got to build your women's division stronger before you add a secondary belt. No, I agree. To their credit, and I think what WWE does sometimes um, to their detriment is they'll use the tag team titles in the women's division just to get groups of women on TV and not necessarily cultivate meaningful storylines in the women's division outside of your main title. So maybe AEW is taking a different approach and maybe we will get, you know, we'll more get the meeting with the belt. Yeah. Instead yeah. of get the meeting to the belt. Exactly. OK, uh, real quick, let's talk Jr's interview with Darby Allen. He says he paints half his face because he is half dead on the inside and he faced death the day his uncle died. That's some deep stuff, man. This is the most character development that I think we have gotten from any AEW wrestler in any promo in the two years that company has been on uh, weekly television. All right, Darby had a match with Nick Comoroto, and uh, Darby wins the match, and he does a pretty cool spot where he lands uh, on the top of him with the coffin drop. Uh, QT Marshall came out and hit a diamond cutter on Sting, and, I mean, talk <laughs> about the, the biggest no sell of the year. Is there yeah. a wrong way to do the diamond cutter where Sting's going to get up and laugh at you? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was uh, it was basically here to get Sting on TV and have QT Marshall play the foil. Uh, I, can you do it that bad though that it, the guy has to no sell because now the diamond cutter is dead from QT Marshall. It's yeah, dead. give never me use it. give me an angle for the next three or four weeks where QT Marshall's doing research, watching old and nitros, practicing. trying to yes, please do that. Send him to DDP Yoga <laughs> because that's where the diamond cutter was created. It was yep. this Diamond Dallas Page's move. Yep. All right. Dark Order's backstage. They say anything that they agree or disagree on, they have to vote now. I do love the voting. Did you vote with your claw? You voted yeah. with a claw, too? Yeah. That's awesome. Um, entertaining. That's all I got to say about it. It was entertaining. No, it was, uh, you know, and I guess you've got the Dark Order back on the same page. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where this goes. I thought it might actually be, you know, a way to have a new leader, i.e. a Bray Wyatt. But. I, I don't know, maybe whatever was going to happen there or, maybe or this anything is a swerve. could very well be. <clears throat> Tony Schiavone interviews Dante Martin in the ring, which is was odd, right? And during the interview, he says, I'll take on anybody in the back. Lights go out, and it's Malachi Black. Black missed. He goes down. The lights go out again. Wakes up with the lights on. Black grabs a mic and says, the House of Black accepts. As Dante Martin's laid out on the floor. Yeah. It yeah, looked devastating. Yeah, no, and I mean he continues to uh, his his appearances continue to be very meaningful and impactful, and the guy's over. 
FTW Ricky Starks, uh, FTW champion Ricky Starks in the ring, calling out Brian Cage. Says Brian wasn't here. I know it's ECW. FTW is ECW. I was going to do a street fight in Philly. He's nowhere to be found. Oh, look, it's Brian Cage. Uh, Hook and Powerhouse rush the ring and pull Starks out before Cage can get to work. So Brian Cage is back. But uh, this leads us to a a women's segment, right? Thunder Rosa talking about how she wants to be the TBS champion. Sky Blue says she's new, but she's going to win it. Ruby Soho says she's going to win the tournament. Here's your winner, Matthew. This is a belt for Jade Cargill. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because that TBS, that bitch show, that's holy smokes. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Do you understand that's why they called him Big Show, right, WWE? Because his initials were TBS? Yep. I mean, yep. that's not why they did that, but that, that was the story at the time. <laughs> no, you're right. And, I mean, the, the thing with Jade Car- Carhill is she's she's uh, still green to a certain extent, but she's got, you know, she's got it. I mean, she's got a look, and she's got a promo, too. I mean, she comes And she's got across, a guy that can talk for her, too. Yeah, she, yeah. And, and, and she comes across as, I mean, it's it's the old airport test. You know, it's if that's your champion walking through the airport are people who do not watch the product going to say, oh, that's somebody. And I think that she's got it probably more so than anybody in that division. I I have mixed feelings on it, though, because, you know, you have got some in-ring generals and in-ring technicians, you know, in the running for that title. So I I want to see I want to see that in rings that in ring skill set continue to evolve. And, you know, that's the thing. They always talked about the Intercontinental Championship belt. Uh, we saw that, obviously, on, you know, Dark Side of Ring and all these other documentaries. Seth Rollins mentioned it as well, that that Intercontinental Champion was the workers' belt, right? So to put the TBS Championship on Jade Cargill would mean getting put over by the workers. Yeah. Will that happen? All right, let's go into the women's singles match of Hikaru Shida taking on Serena Deeb. You and I called it and said, here's what's going to be. She does not get in that win, even yeah. though they already have her name emblazoned on a piece of glass. Serena Deeb with a, uh, with a win. And she grabs yeah. the trophy and uh, hits Sheeta in the head with it. Yeah. My concern throughout this whole match was, what if it's as simple as she gets the win and gets a trophy and that's it? And it's just an absolute horrible booking by AEW. I had that concern there the entire match. Great match. They told a great story. And I really like the evolution of Serena Deeb at the end. She's it's a heel turn. She so it, it's very interesting booking meathead because, yeah, she cheated. It was a, a gouge of the eyes, but she won via submission. So it's a heel tactic. But the yep. heel tactic was not completely responsible for her winning. She still looks strong. She got your former champion to tap out and then to put the icing on the cake, attacking her with that trophy. I loved it. So uh, Darby Allen walking out of the building with Alex Marvez. Uh, here comes a limo. They're attacked by the pinnacle. Sean Spears gets him with the chair. MGF chokes Allen with a skateboard and the pinnacle leaves him lying on the ground. Uh, Shivani interviewed Britt Baker DMD with Jamie Hader and Rebel. And Baker says the TMT or TBS championship is fantastic because all you jealous bitches can fight over that title. We're all watching from the top. That's, I mean, if you're going to make another title, make sure that you're, Training title champion yeah. talks about the other title and says this is the one that matters. Yeah, let me go back to uh, Darby being attacked by people in a limousine, all dressed in black with black ski masks. Now, you would think it's the Pinnacle, it's a chair, it's Wardlow's Wardrow Wardlow's Wardrow. move, <laughs> but. It makes absolutely no sense that they're all in black and in ski masks. I don't know that this is going to happen, but please swerve me. Please have these people continue to attack Darby and it not be the pinnacle. Huh. Okay. All right. but, but they're doing the pinnacle moves to throw you off the scent. Who it's going to be, I don't know, but that's what I want. Fair enough. Didn't happen, but I understand. All right, Casino Ladder Match. Winner earns an AEW World Championship match. Andrade El Idolo, John Moxley, Lance Archer, Matt Hardy, Orange Cassidy, Pac, and a wild card. Matthew Thomas, what time did you get a text message from me when I told you who I thought would be in this match? Uh, it was prior to the match starting. It was prior to the show starting. I prior think, to the show to starting, be honest. I believe, yep. The wild card. My boy. Your guy as well, but he's on my roster for year number two. 
Hangman, Adam Page, the winner of the Casino Ladder match. Matthew Thomas, please let my boy get his title shot in full gear in Minneapolis because it's time for Cowboy shit to become the champion. You you and I, we have been putting our great brains together for the better part of the year trying to figure out when How and this when. page rain was going to happen. And we pretty much settled on November. I mean, we've been pretty much settled on November for quite a while, and it looks like it's going to happen. Yeah, it, it's it's time, man. That pop, I mean, you are – you had, Can I just say, you had yeah. people in Philly – yeah, yelling in Philly. cowboy shit. In, in Philly. In, in Philly. Philly. Philly's so he, hate the Cowboys. His right? his his dec- his decibel level, you know, his pop level, it's on par with that of punk right now. I mean, this this is in the thing with the thing with Do you understand what I'm saying though, as far as football? Yeah. The people of Philadelphia can't see Cowboys. They can't stand them. hundred percent. I mean, if this pop if this pop was in Virginia or in the Carolinas or something, it would have been great. But this was a, this was that pop in Philly. And go back and watch the pop again. Go back and listen to it. Um, this this was a great finish to the show because of what they did with that. I thought the match left something to be desired. The casino thing theme I think works for it's a battle royal. To be completely but, honest, but, but my goodness, all right. So here's the thing: we we have people come in, you know, with their suits in a battle royal. But we yeah. do it in a ladder match where theoretically, theoretically, somebody incapacitates the other guy they're in the match with. You can win the ladder match and none of these other people get into the ring. And yeah, Lance Archer it, stood there and could have went up the oh ladder. Oh, my goodness. The, the, break, the breakdown in psychology there, you have got everybody is, you know, spent on the floor. Archer, that, that ladder set there in that ring without anybody making an attempt – for it for a good three or four minutes. And then when Archer goes out in the crowd with Moxley, the the match came close to jumping the shark several times. That was probably the uh, probably the the biggest point there. But we gotta go up. I think it is maybe, maybe when Orange Cassidy goes up, the guy who should not care about grabbing that at all or care he about ran. climbing a ladder. Yeah. He may very well have been the first person to attempt to get that chip. And the, he's the number one contender as well. Yeah. The booking for this whole thing, I mean, it, it was – you talk about multi-person ladder matches being spot fest and everybody plays dead on the outside while two people go up the ladder. We didn't even get that last night. There was really no apparent – uh, you know, appearance of anybody caring about getting that title shot in that match. It was just to set up the next spot. Uh, so the actual coming and to be together honest, it looks like Adam Page is afraid of heights, which I understand because I am too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he didn't the... look up to the chip. He just kept. I know. For it. I know. I know. Yeah. But you know what? That makes him all the more endearing to me. Me too. <laughs> wow. Uh, so Adam Page, number one contender, he has a title shot coming up against Kenny Omega. I don't know if they're going to address it this Friday on Rampage, but here is what we do have for uh, Fridays on Rampage so far. We actually have four matches for Rampage. We've got the Tag Team Championship match, Lucha Brothers and the Acclaimed. The FTW Championship will be a Philadelphia Street Fight, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. CM Punk takes on Daniel Garcia and Jade Cargo against Sky Blue. That's a lot to get in in an hour. Uh, less promos, less character profiles. Yeah. You know, yeah. you get four matches. Yeah. And maybe you start the show off with the, uh, you know, the introductions already done and the people in the ring like they did last night. The show starts off with Punk and Garcia. Yeah, no, it does, because you got to get the crowd hot for that third hour. Remember, we're always talking about this is the season premiere of SmackDown on Friday. We're always talking about how SmackDown and WWE give the lead in to uh, Rampage. So you got to start with something that a wrestling fan from WWE would recognize. Absolutely. All right. Well, Matthew, that is our program for today. We will talk again tomorrow. We will talk about what's going to come up on Rampage, and we will talk about what's coming up on uh, SmackDown. It's the season premiere, plus a new episode of Dark Side of the Ring tonight. I don't know the category, but we're going to try to review it. As long as it's not hardcore wrestling, we'll talk about it. Fantastic. Matthew Thomas, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, that that sounds like a fantastic idea, Media. There you go. For Matthew Thomas, I'm the man they call Media. Hey, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you tomorrow morning. So long, everyone.